I can't even imagine how much judgment we're going to get for our wine glasses. I know. Luckily, those listening can't <laughs> see how pathetic we are. Yeah, but on TikTok, we already got the judgment for the ice cubes, and now we added straws. We might as well be drinking our wine out of sippy cups. We're going to get absolutely <laughs> flamed on TikTok. It's great. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I think there's just something that makes red wine so much better when you just add like just one ice cube. What? I need 10. I love cold. I don't know why people hate on it so much. Well, okay. So like pro tip, I guess, which mm. I should have thought of today, but someone recommended doing frozen grapes. Mm. You just freeze I the grapes. I saw that comment too. And then put your grapes in yeah. the drink, which makes sense. But I'm also like, I like red wine, but like, I kind of like it watered down. I know. Is yeah. that so wrong? <laughs> yeah. Am I gross? And, and this St- wine is straight actually- to jail. <laughs> Well, ice and wine, straight to jail. And I feel like it's a sin because this wine is actually a not five dollars. It's a bougie bottle. It's literally nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> Trying to go, you know, more high class. My current bottle is six ninety nine. Oh, love that! It's the Moon X Cabernet. Try it out. Mm. Well, let's dive in. Let's do it. This one's juicy today. I can't wait. So college, we had our fair share of roommate trouble, drama. Oh, yeah. Fun. Yeah. Um, When Lauren recently started dating her boyfriend, Jeff, we all went to Arizona and like stayed at his house like one weekend. And apparently I had already met Jeff in college. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I didn't even realize. So when we got to his house, I went up to him and I'm like, Jeff, it's so nice to meet you. Mm And he looks me dead in the eyes and goes, Morgan, we've met. He said you met three times. (laughs) Not a chance in hell. One time, max. But one time with a fuzzy memory, the other two, no memory. (laughs) None. College was a good time for me. But he got to experience me and my roommate problems. And you guys have heard about Teresa Teresa. in the first episode. and (laughs) Fake name, but it works. Yeah, Alex, I'm really, really sorry. He, I was mean to you, <laughs> but Jeff brought up this roommate story. And he watched the whole thing. <laughs> Me and Alex, our senior years, just had very different activities. Um, Alex had a long-term boyfriend, and I was going out, making new friends, bringing them back until three. Like I was probably the classic in, stuff. Yeah, like <laughs> I had to listen to her and her boyfriend have sex through the vent, and she had to listen to me party at three a.m. Like it was, it was a bad trade-off for both of us, mm-hmm. but we're still friends today. So. Thank God for that. But I can't believe you exposed her real name. Not that oh, Alex fuck. is like a very unique name, but <laughs> yeah, sorry. She'll, sorry, Teresa. I hope you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> but when I met Jeff, he told me this story and he's like, I, I thought you were such a badass. Like <laughs> you were yelling at your roommate, like blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I feel like a terrible person. That's hilarious. Let's not ever repeat this story again. That's so sweet though, that he said that you were a badass. Like that's a compliment. Oh, he was so impressed Yeah, that I stood my ground and told her to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but moral of the story here. Love you, Alex. Sorry we, you know, senior year was rough. Uh, but roommates can be really, really tough. <laughs> really tough. So today's topic, roommates, they're fucking rough. <laughs> Because they are like, no matter how good of a roommate situation you have, like there's always going to be something. I can't wait to hear this one because I, I honestly, I suppressed. Is that the right word? Do you say suppressed? Yeah. Okay. You have some roommate trauma. Oh my God. Trauma. And I've, I just suppressed it. So I don't talk about it. And I don't even really want to talk about it on this podcast because it was just like traumatic. We, we go in there. But however, watching TikToks made me realize that I feel so not alone. (laughs) Like, oh yeah, there was TikToks that were saying like, no one ever talks about, like they say, you know, relationship problems with, you know, family or with your significant other, but no one ever talks about the fact that we need therapy for like our roommate, like traumas. And I think that's why Reddit is so great too, because Mm -hmm. these stories, like these people are having issues with their roommates and they're reaching out. They're like, I don't know what else to do. Like, this is my last resort because half the time, like or I I guess most of the time, like your roommates are your friends or people you're close with. So if you're battling with those people, who the hell do you reach out to and like vent to? Yeah. Reddit. 
Luckily for us. Also, quick question before we get into this. Did you ever see the TikTok girl who um, had a roommate who believed in Bigfoot and she made it like her full like mission to find Bigfoot? No, but I want to have her on here now. Oh, God, I need to find that one. It was a great I think one. Bigfoot's, a great one. I think Bigfoot's real. But like, there's got to be there's got to be. I mean, maybe people out there that I, are really I don't, big. And I've never really looked into my, people out there that are really big. People <laughs> <laughs> that sounded wrong, but I think there is a big foot, like big aliens out there. No, well, I think aliens, a big are, alien with a big foot. I'm just exposing myself for like the conspiracy loving bitch. I am like, I <laughs> so fucking, true. Bigfoot's real. Aliens are real. Morgan sat me down one day and was like, Lauren, we need to talk about JFK. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make sure you know. Yeah. Uh, it okay. wasn't Lee Harvey R. Oswald. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On to the next. Okay, here we go. So, this uh, first story. There we go. <laughs> um, it's not your traditional roommate. Mm. By the title, it's a guy and his mom. My mom, 56-year-old female, has been using my 19 male sex toys. I am gay. I don't... Mm. Bad roommate vibes. Yeah. You don't steal your roommate's sex toys. So the mom... 56-year-old mom. How does he know that she's stealing them? We'll find out. Okay. <laughs> I've been a collector of toys from a certain company recently. They fill the holes in my relationship at the moment with quarantine. I've spent around $1,500 on my sex toy collection. I'm impressed. Honestly, I've seen some crazy prices. Like I went to, I went to a Dandelzarian party once and they were oh. giving like party gifts. Like um, You got free dildos? I mean... Fuck, I'm jealous. No, it was it was kind of a mess because it was um our other friend Alyssa who got like the party package or whatever, and then she was just like, "You need this more than I do." I was like, <laughs> "Bitch," but I'll take yes. that as a calm thing. True. I don't know. <laughs> true, true. But, but anyway, I looked it up online and it was actually like three fifty. Holy shit! Right. So I was shocked how expensive that stuff can be. That's insane because the one vibrator and all of my friends can attest to this. Literally all of them. But I have this one vibrator that I buy off Amazon for everyone. And that's, again, this sounds kind of weird, but it's a $12.99 vibrator, $13. <laughs> Magical. I just like, I'm flabbergasted even talking about it because it's, it's just like, I'm getting hot and bothered here. It's oh so good. God. But I literally have like, if you look at my Amazon history and you pull up this item, there's literally 20 of them because I use them so much and you know, they're $13. So they, sometimes they break. Right. Right. But I order them for everyone. Like I've ordered Sarah one, you one. I don't know if I ever got all Honda roped into it, but I order all of my friends, these, the same <laughs> vibrator. And like, maybe I'll post the link or like DM us on Instagram. If you want the link for this, because it's, it's Just a Morgan's, steal. Morgan's go-to gift, like housewarming present. Oh my God. <laughs> I, um, I actually bought it for my brother's like, my little brother, who's this God, me and my family are so weird, so weird. But I actually bought it for my little brother's ex girlfriend because I was like, <laughs> before she was an ex. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Before she was an ex. But oh my God, that the would be new so one savage. Like, hey, I think you need this. <laughs> he has Sorry about the breakup. <laughs> Here's your parting gift, <laughs> vibrator. But um, no, I, I'm sure the new one will get it too because I just it's my initiation gift apparently. Yeah, clearly. Um, but uh, we, you know, we were talking like, do you guys, you know, Taylor, like, do you make sure Danica has an orgasm too? And he's like, meh, 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 meh. like typical boy, like shy Taylor's gonna boy. Kill you for saying this. Yeah, <laughs> but like typical shy boy. And he's like, meh, 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 meh. like no, I just do what I want. And I'm like, you're a terrible boyfriend. <laughs> and Danica, I'm ordering you this vibrator. <laughs> And so it was her Christmas present. Wait, wait this is real? This actually, ha this was the ex-girlfriend? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So um, Ellie. That was really nice of you. And also like. Ellie, if you're listening, you'll get one too. Don't worry. <laughs> They're good. God damn it. What else is this story? What else is it? That's I need to it. know more. I mean, just, I, I'm going to have to have my mom on this podcast sometime because like my mom, like in the middle of this conversation, my mom was like doing positions and she's like, you guys should try this one. Taylor, you go like this. And she was like, Oh my God. Demonstrating positions. I can't, I can't even imagine. No, my, my brothers, like anytime me and my mom are together, my brothers are like, they one, they dread it because they, they call me like mini Danette, which, mm. Huh. shoe fits maybe a little not, <laughs> not totally but a little not on politics <laughs> not on politics but I, I you I you, corrupted her yeah you did but um 
like when me and my mom are together, it's just chaos. Like I love to talk about sex and sexuality and just like, I'm like the complete opposite. Yeah. I'm like, it doesn't exist. I don't think it exists. Just bottle it up. <laughs> just bottle it up. I'm like there's no chance me and my family have had any sexual experiences ever. <laughs> and I'm, whenever we're like in the group setting, I'm like, there's no chance. I just, yeah, it doesn't exist. And I'm so open about it and I love talking about it. So funny. So me and my mom, we always just like, gang up on my brothers and we're like matt how's your sex life with your wife oh my like, god is it they good? probably hate that like you have two kids are you still focusing on each other oh my god taylor do you that's make probably sure way better though that's probably really healthy it right? is i definitely think it is i think be good there's certain boundaries which yeah you that you probably cross because like come on you probably cross i know but <laughs> i like to believe that i'm i'm very respectful of people's boundaries and so when they when they do finally say shut the fuck up morgan I do. Oh, I do stop. That's so nice. Yeah. But I love that. I want to encourage a healthy sex life and be very sex positive mm-hmm. and just live love your that. life. I love that. So you know? what, like, I need to know more about this story though. Oh I mean, God. What? I know. We got <laughs> so off topic here. So what, uh, what is she, I mean, okay. So spends to, a lot to recap. Yeah. Um, this boy, 19 male lives with his mom and he has a, bunch of toys. He spent a thousand five hundred on this collection. Obviously, each of these are meant for one person only. Sharing is not caring for them. They can get bacteria and carry disease that never go away. I take care of my collection, but a couple of them have gone missing recently. Obviously this makes me nervous as these are meant to be kept to myself. One of my quote friends has found its way into my mom's shower. I know that he doesn't have a mind of his own, so someone's been taking him places. Dad is on a work trip and siblings don't live here. It must be my mom. This is the weirdest situation I've ever been in. Anyone got advice for the next steps? I'm, so, <laughs> I'm speechless. I'm speechless. Like, um, I just can't even put myself in that same situation because like, would you confront your mom if she was taking your sex toys? <laughs> I, I honestly, like, I don't it, think you would. I don't know if I would because like we just dumb. talked about like, I, I think that I would play dumb. Yeah. Yeah. I would immediately be like, bitch, no. Yeah. Like, I hope you sanitize that first, yeah. foremost, because you have to think about this too. Like, if he's gay, like he mentioned, right. like, this toy is going up his butt. Right. And for his mom, it's going probably up. Probably not going not, up the butt. Yeah. Probably not going up her butt. So, like, you know, you got a lot of bacteria, cross contamination, like, messy. I don't know. I, I, for me, like, this wouldn't be a hard topic for me because I would probably just go up to my mom and be like, oh, did you take my fucking vibrator? Like, what'd you do with it? Well, are you using it? I think- the, Did you wash it? The big question too is that like, <laughs> does she already know that he has this collection and that he spent a lot of money and that he For really cares sure, about it? Because if she knows that, then it's just like, no question. Like, you're taking my- personal belongings that are like extra personal well she's in there digging and around for them yeah. like he said like yeah it didn't get up and walk away right like it's not this isn't an episode of toy story yeah. <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> so his mom is obviously borrowing his toys i think you just need to be like hey i'm really happy that you're exploring you know if you and dad want to bring toys into the bedroom do it wait, wait, for wait. It. so the dad is he's, in- he's on um a work trip so I think that's why she's borrowing the toys. Wow. She couldn't wait. <laughs> she couldn't wait. She needed that, you know, sexual satisfaction. I mean, she's a house owner. Can't she just order it herself? I mean, you'd think 14 so. $14.99, didn't you say? $12.99. <laughs> $12.99. But I think for a lot of people, like, it's, you know, a lot of people aren't as sex positive And, like, it's very, like, nerve-wracking and taboo to but even then, go to a... But then wouldn't you be more discreet? Like, if yeah. I were to sneakily borrow someone's dildo you'd put it back yeah you'd like wash it and put it back right yeah you'd think but i don't know maybe she's like i mean he spent fifteen hundred dollars on sex toys maybe right. she was like he probably won't notice one mm, like it's just one it. and she's too embarrassed to like talk about it or ask but Damn. there's so many ways to get it now like amazon like yeah there's so many toys discreet shipping but she probably shares an account with her husband you never know what's going on with the husband and their like mm-hmm. communication like true some people are weird they consider that like cheating which i can't Re- yeah I, which is i mean far-fetched that's kind of like amish to me but no but some <laughs> people like they do like some people pleasure yourself without me like cheating yeah mm-hmm. well and i think some people are just very uncomfortable with sex toys they think it like is oh you're using this vibrator like you're replacing me like I think some guys mm-hmm. or even, you know, other females in whatever your relationship dynamic is. Yeah. I think they see it as like, oh, you, you're replacing me. Mm-hmm. I'm not enough. 
I'm not doing it for you. Right. But it's not that. Like, especially if you use it, if you use it alone. Like if your dick vibrated, things would be different. (laughs) (laughs) True. (laughs) But I no. but I think that has something to be said, but it's, it's just like, when you use it on your, on your own, it's just like, it's just, you're literally just trying to like get yourself off. But I think when you use it with your partner, it's a different experience, a different dynamic. And I think it's like, it's not replacing you. It's just adding to the experience. It's heightening it. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't think, you know, if you haven't experienced that or had an open relationship where you can talk about what that is, like, I don't think a lot of people know that. What are the comments on this one? Post is deleted. Mm. He just needs to confront his mom. Yeah, exactly. Just communication yeah it's not that hard right it might be a little touchy taboo for some people but like just be like hey love you like we hey can't i found this and i don't know why you did that like yeah. it's not that hard no so that like, one's a pretty easy fix so the next story am i the asshole for putting my penis in peanut butter and leaving it in the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> maybe i mean if it's your peanut butter then no it's your peanut butter. Let's dive Do in. Do whatever you want with your peanut butter. <laughs> I feel the same way. I'm looking for some assistance determining whether I'm the asshole in the situation that has divided our house into two groups. I, 20-year-old male, am a college student living with four other guys my age. It's our second year living together, and the last year we had an issue with people eating food that isn't theirs. Like, that's that's a worldwide problem. <laughs> Lauren can relate. It's a worldwide pandemic. <laughs> Eating Panorama. foods that is that's not yours. No, but I've actually, I've done that actually when I'm drunk and I've eaten like my expensive ass salmon. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, what can I do to replace it? Let me go buy you <laughs> the same fish. Uh, yeah, it's a big problem. But I don't do it like regularly. You know what I mean? Like no. I've done it before when I'm like drinking, accidents I'm happen. Like- <laughs> yeah, accidents happen for sure. So. Now we have a strict label your stuff and only eat things with your name on it policy. My girlfriend and I like to get a bit frisky in the bedroom. And a few nights ago, I dipped my penis in peanut butter and she licked it off. Yes, I understand. That is slightly bizarre. It's not that weird. I don't think it's weird because people use whipped cream. Yeah, we see crazy things on Reddit all the time. Like that's... That's baby shit. Exactly. <laughs> it's a week. Yeah. It's a week. Try harder next time. <laughs> Do, go big or go home. Yeah. No, not, not bizarre. It's not weird. But that's how we roll. <laughs> the controversy is that since we have a mouse problem, I did not want to leave the peanut butter in my bedroom. So afterwards, I closed it and returned it to my kitchen cupboard. Note that it had a huge, quote, peanut butter dilemma label on it. So it was clear that it belonged to me. I don't understand. What does that mean? Peanut butter dilemma? I'm sure he like labeled it. Like maybe he has two peanut butters. And so he labeled like the one that he put his dick in. Mm. So he wouldn't eat that one. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, smart, like really smart. So he goes, one of my roommates tells me yesterday, oh, by the way, I had some of your peanut butter. He sees my visibly shocked reaction and asks, what's up? So ultimately I come clean about the whole deal. He's furious and says, why the fuck would you put it back in the kitchen? That guy's a pussy. (laughs) (laughs) Take a little dick. No, but I mean, it's on him. Like he's the one that went into someone else's cupboard, ate someone else's peanut butter. And like serves you right. Like serves you right. Hard lesson, but I'm sorry, dude. (laughs) Yeah. Like you guys have the strict label policy. Mm -hmm. That one's on you. I remind him of the mouse situation and our policy to not have other people's labeled foods. This is the first time all year that somebody has had my labeled food and informed me after the fact. He said it was just some peanut butter on his bread. It's not like he was taking full chicken breast from me. Doesn't matter. It's not yours. It's the principle. Yeah. It's the principle. You already, you know, you have this in line and it serves you fucking right. You just ate dick butter. (laughs) My house is split. Can we coin that term? (laughs) Dick butter. (laughs) (laughs) trademark (laughs) literally my house is split three to two on who is in the wrong and it's spilling over into other aspects of our living situation who who's winning i know he doesn't say say? no damn i hope they're on his side because honestly like this dude did it to himself yeah we need to get over this pronto so i'm asking am i the asshole they've divvied up cupboards their own space it wasn't a communal cupboard so this dude did have to go yeah. out of his way. That guy's a pussy and he's just mad that he looks like a pussy now. Yeah. <laughs> so overall on the post, 
the like when you have an am I the asshole post, mm-hmm. there's like this algorithm in the comments where if you say not the asshole or am I the asshole, it'll like total up the comments to give the post an overall rating. So the mm-hmm. overall rating for this post was everyone sucks, which I totally disagree with. What does like, that mean everyone sucks? It means that the votes were so conflicting that he's not the asshole, but like he still sucks. And everyone in the house sucks. Like everyone in the situation is wrong. Oh, that's funny. I didn't yeah. know Reddit did that. Yeah. So I'm going to be honest. Like I completely disagree. Like I think he's not the asshole. Like no, he literally labeled his food. He made it an interesting label, which if I saw peanut butter dilemma, my first thought wouldn't be to eat it. I would be like, this is a strange label. I would also, if I was him, I'd be like, I didn't even have to tell you. Actually, he probably shouldn't have told him. <laughs> No, I mean, you know that it's like, as long as he doesn't have STDs or something crazy, like, you know that he's going to be fine. Like, yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's unfortunate the thought of like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, I'm sure that I've had waiters or waitresses in the past. I mean, I'm not sure. Pick but their hair out of your yeah, food. Like, or, or-, or maybe did something weird with my food. Like maybe someone was having a bad day and just spit my food for no reason. And like, I didn't get sick from it. I don't, I've never (laughs) known that it happened and I don't need to know. So if a waiter called me and was like, Hey, just, you know, like 14 years ago when you were a kid, I spit in your food. I'd be like, why? Fuck you. I didn't need to know that. So I think honestly, the only reason he's an asshole is for telling him. (laughs) Honestly, (laughs) debatable, but no, but I think it's, it's like, it's, um, it's loss prevention. He's not going to ever fucking go near his food again. True. True. Now he learned his fucking lesson. Exactly. And like, I think like it's hard because like for me, I'm, a big, big fan of coconut oil for lube. If you don't use it already, try it out. But this is not a Jay Alvarez movie. <laughs> I was about to say, like, you were all about this even before the video. Oh, my God. I've, I have been on coconut oil since 2013. <laughs> been on it. Been on it. 2013. Jay Alvarez, like, has no clue. <gasps> oh, my God. But here's the thing about the Jay Alvarez thing. If your coconut oil is not solid at room temperature, you don't want that shit. Literally, mm. go to your grocery store, Trader Joe's. What was theirs? He used like some, like, it literally like pumped out of a bottle, which mm. is like, that's the shit that gives you yeast infections and like mm. does dirty shit. Like, go to your grocery store and just get a jar of it. But what I was going to say. Got it. I, I think it's kind of hard because I don't see the difference in like, if you would have just screwed that peanut butter back up and put it. Like you could even put it in a Ziploc and then put it in a drawer. Screwed that peanut butter. (laughs) Yeah. No pun intended. (laughs) But like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't put my sex coconut oil back in the kitchen. Like Mm -hmm. it stays in a drawer next to my bed. Right. But granted, I don't know if they have a mice problem, you know, whatever. But not the asshole. I think your roommate just won't eat your food anymore. I mean, it's like, I think... Even then, I would still be like, shut up, you're being a pussy because it's just like you're taking food that's not yours. Yeah. But because of the fact that they had this conversation, like we have a strict policy, we are not sharing food, we yeah. are labeling food. This guy's the asshole. The other one is like the roommate. Oh, for sure. Like, not, not the poster. For sure. So you go, OP. <laughs> you, uh, you keep on that peanut you butter dick. You keep on that peanut butter. <laughs> what did you say? Dick butter? Dick butter. Yeah. <laughs> dick butter. I actually, I would wear that on a shirt. Next one Am I the asshole for telling my roommate he can't have a red room? Red room. Have you seen Fifty Shades of Grey? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's like their sex room. It's like a room that has like chains, whips. Does he pay for it? Like that own his own room? I don't know. Like does he pay for two different rooms or is that his room? Because like I feel like there's no problem with that unless it's like really loud and disturbing and that's not what you want, then again, just go separate ways. Yeah. (laughs) So I had to put euphemism in the title. I've never read 50 shades of gray, but I basically understand it. And it means sex room. That's what he's trying to do. Mm, I was picturing it red. So I, I'm, I was confused. Now I understand. No, I'm picturing like a ton of red lights with like red, like painting. I was like, "Mm, no, no, no. (laughs) Christian gray calls his sex room the red room. Got it. So spicy. I know. Our third roommate moved out, but we both make more money now and honestly don't want to invite a third person. My roommate wants to convert his old room into a sex haven. This guy doesn't even get laid a lot. I've never protested him doing it in his room. Now he wants a sex room. I love that. He doesn't get laid. (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't need this. It won't be used frequently. Like, it just logically does not make sense. <laughs> no, like this is a big jump. Like, especially if you like 
I don't know. Like, I feel like maybe even, they're like, maybe it's where he doesn't need another person. Maybe they're like toys no, just for himself. No, the sex room, like, especially in the books is like, there's a bed in there. You tie the person up. Like it's a sex room. It's like, you have all your toys in there. It's just, it's this like Aww. wild. Exp- <laughs> I'm picturing him like, I'm picturing, no, I'm picturing him like McLovin where he's like, yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> like super um, hopeful. You remember McLovin from, uh, yeah, super bad. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He, he could be trying to manifest this, but yes. also like if some boy manifestation. If, yeah. Yes. But if some boy approached you at the bar and was like, Hey, do you want to go back and see my red room? Depends on how rich he was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But like if it was like 50 shades of gray guy, yeah. I'd be like picture, but picture I'd consider not. It. Picture not. Picture. Then absolutely not. No, that's a murder room. Exactly. That's not a sex exactly. room. Exactly. That is a murder yeah, room. no chance. You're just making it easy to kill me. I remember seeing like a tweet about that. They're like, people only like this Christian Grey guy because he's rich. rich. Like, if he wasn't, like, this would be a fucking crime scene. Yeah. No, this would be a murder. And I was like, and I a murder mystery. I pictured that, and I was like, that is so fucking accurate. Uh, very accurate. So accurate. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I told I, him. So sad, but like, <laughs> like I'm not like that. But it is, it is more. I don't, for whatever reason, it doesn't make it as creepy if the person's like super, super wealthy, even though it could be even creepier. Well, and I think very like, unfortunate. I think there are my been, mind things like that. Yeah. And I think that's why like certain serial killers like have had an easier time than others. Damn. Like, yeah. Being an attractive looking guy, having charisma, like, oh, it it's makes so scary. It, it is. And it makes it it makes it easier for those people to find, you know, their victims and be that predator mm-hmm. because they're looked at. They're not the weird dude at the bar. They're not like, and not to say like there are any weird people at the bar, but like, I mean, everything is very subjective and whatever, you know, your feelings are on someone. Like if you have a certain look and you have privilege, like you know, there's like this benefit you have where you can be creepy and not be perceived as such yeah well i remember seeing one time this uh i think it was a tweet but it was so fucking funny because it was these two chicks like walking out of the mall and this guy he's dressed in a suit and he's like he's like leaning up against like a corvette or like some crazy oh, nice car this is a youtube and, channel yeah and he's this and he's is like, a whole channel and he's like hey he's like you guys like I- i'm actually new here like can you would show me you, around you, yeah you want to show me around and they're like yeah totally and he goes okay great this is my car over here yeah and then he walks to the other side of the car and it's just like beat down like chevy i don't know what it is but and they're like, like no and they're like we have Sorry, boyfriends we're busy. <laughs> <laughs> we have boyfriends we have to go and everyone's Bye. like they're shady as fuck but like which is like yes they, they look really bad but something about our minds think that it's like a scarier version yeah it's, we think that more yeah. money means safer for whatever reason which is just not true but like, and I think that's why I'm like, oh, like a guy who has a red room, like, would I be that scared of it when I'm picturing Christian oh, yeah. Gray? Like, that doesn't seem as scary because he's like Christian Gray seems like this really like it was a cool, fantasy like, though. Yeah, this fantasy it was guy. Like a fantasy book. But if it was anyone else, or if just, it was even in real life and not a book, that's true. How would you react? Oh, I would still be scared. You're I, right. I, even I be, even if he was rich, I think I'd still be scared. Like, yeah, I would be sure. very very skeptical. Yeah. It, it wouldn't be like, hey, let me go into the red room on the first date. Yeah. Like it would take a lot of convincing. Oh, for sure. Like, let me make sure that you're a normal human. Exactly. Before I jump in that. Oh my room. God. Before I let you talk. Oh my God. Cause you're getting tied up. That's so scary. You're I so can't vulnerable. imagine the first time meeting someone and like allowing them to tie me up. That's the scariest yeah. idea ever. So that's the thing. Hell no. The fact that this dude is hell no. Exactly. Yeah. What is he thinking? He doesn't even have a girlfriend and he's not oh getting laid God. a lot. <laughs> He needs like McLovin. You need to settle down. <laughs> God, I told him we weren't going to have a sex room, and he told me I was being an asshole. I said that we both need to agree on what to do with the room, and I didn't want it to become a sex room. He asked me if I have any better ideas, and I admitted a cat room. Don't. <laughs> No, no more cats. No, I saw a TikTok. I'm literally so annoying. I keep talking about TikToks I've seen. But where this guy made a cat room and it was the most beautiful thing ever. It was a door. There was beds. There was levels. There was like, it was like an apartment. He had like a view. It was amazing. Um, You know, I... So no, you don't want a cat room. Fine. I don't want a cat room. All right. Well, what are we going to make it then? So he goes on to say, 
He said that it should at least become a sex room until I do have better ideas. And he said it shouldn't even bother me because he won't be having anybody in there until quarantine is over. I asked what the point of having a sex room was then. And he asked me what the point of not having one is. Oh my God. Are you living with a 15 year old horny boy? Is he paying for like two thirds of the rent? No, they're splitting it. Why does he get to decide what the room is? And why does it get to be a sex room? Like I just, his theory is so stupid. Also, have they not heard of a fucking guest bedroom? Yeah. Why is it so weird? (laughs) Why does it have to be so extreme? I don't know because they're boys and like, Oh wait, the other, the, the, the OP is a boy. They're both guys. Oh, I was thinking it was a girl. No. They're, you're they're like, both you're guys. reading it off in your girl voice. So I'm like, mm, girl. <laughs> yeah, no, they're both guys. It sounds like a third roommate moved out. Mm-hmm. They now have room to afford the whole place mm-hmm. without needing that third income. That makes it funnier. <laughs> yeah, so it's two guys arguing about a sex room. And it's like the one who is like, I don't want a sex room. It's not like he's going to go into that sex room and fuck in there too. No, it's like, it. no, you don't one. share a sex room. That's fucking creepy it's and gross weird. and weird. That's so tacky. Exactly. Like if there was a tacky way to have a sex room, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> And a lot of the comments point that out. Oh my God. Not the asshole. I'd start by pointing out since you won't be using the sex room, he'll need to pay rent on two rooms for himself rather than just one. Yeah. Give him straight facts. Because it's not even like, like straight let's facts. say that this was a room where there was two different desks and they use it as their office and one used it more than the other. Like then office, get den, yeah. guest room. But like he Options. literally is not ever going to enter that room ever again. No. Like that, you can't just have a say over that. Yeah. I'd really lean on not having a sex room. It's going to be seen as weird and creepy and practically so creepy. guarantees he won't get to use it. Next comment, this. As a single woman, if a dude I was dating tried to take me into his own version of a red room. Disgusting. I'd be out of there so fast. Oh my God. If my boyfriend had one from when I first started talking to him to even if he just decided to get one now, I would be so creeped out and disgusted. I might break up with him. You never would have dated him. Oh no, I would never would have dated him from the start. But like if he were to do it right now and just surprise me and thought it was like super sexy, I would probably break up with him. (laughs) It's just like... I don't uh, know. I think if you're, if you want that dynamic and yeah, you're like, if you're if into, I was in on it, but if he yeah. was just like surprise, I'd be like, that's weird. Your, your partner needs to consent. Yeah. But even like as a single guy, like you're not Christian gray. And so, no. um, are you going to be able to like maintain this sexual dominant lifestyle? Like I, I just do it. No, make it a guest bedroom. Like it's going to backfire. This is McLovin. <laughs> Literally, this is the real life McLovin. He's not McLovin. He's some goof. All right, fine. He's out. (laughs) Bye. So I'll give you an option on the next one. Mm -hmm. One is about a roommate that is posting about their other roommate washing his girlfriend's period blood in a bowl in their kitchen. I'm going to throw up. (laughs) So let's go with that one. No, 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 I can't. Me. No, I want the other one. (laughs) 20 year old male. And my roommates, 20-year-old male, we are debating if it is okay for him to clean his sheets stained from his girlfriend's period blood in a metal bowl in the kitchen with bleach. I am saying it is absolutely not okay to clean this in the shared kitchen cooking bowl, even if it is sanitized after, because I'm not okay with the fact it was bodily fluid from his significant other. He thinks it's fine because he will be cleaning slash sanitizing it like any other dish. I'm so disgusted. Why? It's just period blood. Oh! Oh, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm just disgusted. And like, I even like, I even second guess, like I feel bad sometimes when I'm watching Arlo, our friend's dog, and I use our bowls to like have him like eat out of it. But, and I'm always like, oh, are my roommates going to get mad? Like I'm considerate of that, even though like I don't care because I'm like, I'm going to put through the dishwasher. It'll be fine. But like, I get worried that like my roommates are going to be upset about that. Like I can't imagine like period blood. Like, oh, like I'm disgusted. I think people, I don't know. I think there's like, I think people take, periods like way too aggressively like I don't think period blood is that gross I think I do (laughs) I think everyone is a little different but like do you and your boyfriend have sex when you're on your period no so there's the like you look at a period as a really gross and dirty thing that's just you but for me maybe I was raised catholic (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but for me, I'm just like, it's literally just like, does your fucking body cycle? It's one week out of every month. I'm not going to let it stop me from fucking living my life. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So for me, I'm like, he's cleaning the bowl. He's using bleach. I don't see this being a big problem. I I mean, you period blood on your sheets. You period blood on underwear. You just wash them. No, you throw them away. Sometimes. It depends. It depends on how bad the damage is. Yeah. I just wash them regardless. And then but you like, have okay, period why is, underwear. Why is it in a bowl? Like, what do you mean? Like, he's that's probably like, like scrubbing that's like, it well, okay, in a bowl. What? So like, would you... Would you put like pee in a bowl? Like, would you pee in a bowl and then be like, hey guys, I'm peeing in a bowl today? If you peed your sheets and then washed them in a bowl. But okay, let's just say that you decided to pee in a bowl and then you're like, but I'm going to sanitize it. But it's but that's for not like a real situation. Well, what if it was for like an experiment? Like you were doing something for like a science class and you were like, oh, I need to use my own human urine and like put some other type of like crystals in here to like see what it does or whatever. I mean, I, I don't would, know. would that be okay? I guess if you're cleaning it. What? No. <laughs> um, well, here's Come the thing. Come on. No. Here's the thing. If you, where do you keep your toothbrush? In a drawer? Oh, like it kind of, it's in my mirror, the mirror that opens. So there's a lot of people that keep their toothbrushes just like in a cup on their sink. Mm -hmm. If people are shitting. Oh, you get like the particles in there. If you're taking a shit. I remember that. My friend Emily Kniff told me that a long time ago. I yeah, never forgot it. Your poop <laughs> particles fly on your toothbrush. So I mean- I think like as long as he's cleaning the bowl, like I don't really see the issue here. I think like people take periods like too aggressively and just like, but also he's a boy. He probably doesn't know that he can just like throw them in the wash with some OxyClean, but maybe yeah, it was that's a really, why, maybe it was heavy flow. Oh, but that's why I'm disgusted. Cause I'm like, how could you just like, he's trying to get the stain out, especially letting it sit in there. Like I'm no, actually No, it sounds nauseous. like he's actively cleaning. Sounds like he's just letting it soak in a bowl next to their maybe. sink. And there's just like a bloody water, like in their sink while they're doing their fucking cooking. Oh, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> no, I don't mind this one. You clean your period bowl. I can't. I can't. Someone suggests just rinse it out in the tub. No. Also a good option. Oh, like, oh, I thought you meant rinse the bowl out in the tub. No. I was like, we're getting farther down. <laughs> it's just period blood. Not that bad. It happens. I just can't. I can't. I don't know. Periods are normal and natural. Yeah, but like there's a lot of things that are normal and natural that I don't want in my cooking bowl. I think raw chicken is grosser than a period. No. Yeah. Raw chicken can have salmonella. Periods are just blood. Well. And uterine tissue. I'll let you win this, but I, <laughs> I'm disgusted. <laughs> periods happen. It isn't as gross as you're making it seem. Yeah, you clean your bowl, your period blood. Good for him for being supportive of his girlfriend's period versus shaming her. Yeah, no, that's because true. I went through hell. The other guy, I think, is like, that's really like sweet of him that he's, you know, but at the same time, like the other guy has every right to be like, this makes me very uncomfortable. I mean, you live together. If it's your shared bowl. Yeah. Just tell him, yeah, like, bring exactly. it to the tub. Exactly. Doesn't have to be that hard. Exactly. You don't want to just like tiptoe on someone's toes. I don't remember what I said earlier, but you don't want to walk on someone's toes. Yeah. And <laughs> step on someone's toes. You don't want to strut across someone's toes. <laughs> just tap dance on someone's toes. <laughs> The you know? phrase is step on someone's toes. Yeah, you don't want to do that. And like you live together. You want your roommate situation to be happy and healthy. Unlike what these people are all going through. Yeah. Wild. Well, you're not the <laughs> asshole. So you have our support. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all we have for you. That's all we have. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, if you have any other crazy roommate stories, please send them to me. But until next time, bye. Love you.